Yo, my peoples, what's up? Welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Jason here. Today I have a playthrough of Genotype, the Mendelian Genetics Game. Don't let the subtitle scare you. Don't let the science of this scare you. This is a really, really fun worker placement game. It is from genius game designer John Caveyu and Co. Uh, they are pretty famous at this point for putting out a lot of fun science games. I'm staring at my shelf. I'm looking at cell atomic and periodic and covalence and cytosis. I have all their games and they all have something cool to contribute. This one, as I said, contributes work replacement. And uh, the idea of it, the motif of it is that you are cultivating some plants. So uh, if you know the Mendel's genetics, uh, Gregor Mendel was a monk in the uh, in the before times, <laughs> way back, uh, I'm not really sure when, but you get the idea. Uh, and you're going to cultivate these plants, you're going to be uh, getting seeds uh, and genetic material from this area, you're going to be uh, prepping yourself with this area, work replacement style, over five rounds, and then uh, victory will be yours, hopefully. Uh, I will be going up against the Brother Johan Solo Bot, which is a nine card automa for this playthrough. This is the One Stop Co-op Shop. We are a gaming empire. Go ahead and check us out on the podcast. I have a podcast around once a week. Also, uh, Mike and Peter and Steve contribute to the podcast as well. You are on the YouTube channel. So go ahead and check out the YouTube channel. Like the video, subscribe, uh, and check out. We have all sorts of solo and co-op games. I mean, we just have tons and tons of videos. We've been going strong for a couple of years now. A big happy family making videos for you. Uh, if you want hot games, you want rare games, uh, you know, reprints, oh, we have everything when it comes to solo and co-op in the One Stop Co-op Shop. Please go ahead and consider our stream channel, which is a part of to YouTube where we go live plays, really hot games, games that we're playing right now like Marvel Champions at all. Go ahead and link to our Discord. Go ahead and check out the show notes uh, for a link to the Discord that is. Uh, the Discord is where we have tons of conversations. It is completely and utterly free to join. It is a very supportive and welcoming community for all peoples involved. Uh, and uh, if you want to join our Patreon, of course you can. We wouldn't say no to any contribution, but don't feel don't feel obligated to join to the Patreon. You can join the community uh, completely free to you. So let me go ahead and do a rules overview for Genotype, a Mendelian Genex game, and now we'll get into it. So the first thing I'll show you before I do anything. Uh, these are actually upgraded components that I'm showing you. These are normally uh, wood little cylinders instead of the nice beads. Uh, these are don't have the stickers in the regular version. Uh, these would be cardboard instead of plastic. I'll show you what these are in just a second. But I did want to note that I wanted to show you the increased components to kind of show you exactly uh, what this game is capable of in terms of a table presence. Okay. So this is the main player area. This is your gardening journal. And this is the beating heart of the game right here. If you understand how this works, then you're going to understand a good chunk of what you need in order to be successful here. These are the plant cards and they indicate genetic material that you're going to be acquiring over the course of a round in order to be able to fulfill it or validate it, cover all these four spots, score the points, and then be able to put it into your score pile. You're gonna start the game with two, one in your hand and one on that is planted. They range from this one, which is hard to, uh, a little bit harder to fulfill to, to these nice ones, easy ones, and all sorts of ones in between. And I'll show you the tools in just a second. So as long as you understand this, you understand the game. So let me go ahead and show you how you actually acquire the material in order to start validating these plants. So I showed you the plants. This is how you are going to acquire the genetic material in order to cultivate those plants and make them happen. During the game's second phase, not the first phase, just keep that in mind, uh, three phases in the game, so I'm actually demonstrating the second phase right here. You're going to roll these, and you're going to assign them. So then uh, I'll, show, I'll go over what the, these mutations do in just a second. Uh, but I wanted to illustrate this, which is the Punnett square. 
uh, what the Punnett square does is going to determine how uh, the kind of genetic material you get when you do that roll. So then if you want that dominant gene is not that uh, likely. If you want a purely receptive gene, also kind of not that likely. Uh, if you want that mixed gene, the heterozygous gene, it's a little bit more likely. So now I'm going to set that up here and set that up here. What you are going to be doing in the work replacement phase of the game, which is that first phase, is you are going to manipulate this Punnett square in order to get what you want. So going back to my card over here, uh, I'm going to try to set up the board so that I can get these uh, the genetic material I want. It's actually a really hard card. <laughs> But the green is easy, uh, easier, uh, because it's a mixed rate, which is a little bit more likely on the dice. But let's say I wanted to go for this uh, seed over there, which is a recessive R. Then I would want to manipulate this Punnett square in order to make that happen. Uh, so this is uh, double-sided, and if I wanted to emphasize dominant ones, I'd do this one. But if I wanted to emphasize recessive, then I'll take my worker space. I get three per turn unless I acquire more, and I'll show you that in a second, but three per turn to start. I would place that right there, and I would put the recessive flag right there. So now I'm a little bit more likely on a two and a four, when I roll that, then it would go into the recessive genes, gives me a little bit more to play with. When you go to a space first, you can claim a coin. These are precious. <laughs> uh, money's a little bit tight in the game. So let's say I went here first, I would acquire the coin. Uh, I could also acquire it by going to this space, which is the first shift, which during the draft phase, which is that second uh, phase of the round, I'd be able to draft first. Uh, uh, if you don't go, then it normally just kind of goes in player order. What's really important to note, this is a huge part of the game right here. Uh, people can go there, they can change stuff, they can kind of uh, see what you're going for and then go there and, me and mess with your genetic material, uh, depending if it's a lower high player count game. Uh, so much of the game happens in terms of the, the genetic manipulation uh, on this side of the board. There are other things that you could do as well. Let's say you need that precious money. Uh, you would go to the treasury and you just acquire two coins. Uh, this will help you validate the, the different uh, aspects of your plant if you pay a little bit of money kind of jump the line a little bit let's say you've been screwed out of the genetic material that you want the university is very kind and says you know what here for a coin we'll help you out we have some spare genetic material <laughs> the nursery is where you're going to acquire new cards and also the tool shed uh, this also fills in uh, when you don't have what you need in terms of the genetic material you'll be able to get these uh, tools they're one-time use and kind of get around uh, what the genetic uh, genetic area has to offer. So one shots, uh, manipulation in order to be able to get what you want if the main avenue is closed to you for whatever reason. So now we've proceeded to the game's second phase, which is the acquisition of the genetic material. Uh, in the first phase, I've manipulated the conditions. Uh, in the beginning of the second phase, I've rolled and assigned to different areas. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate that yellow right there. So then uh, in this particular case, purple player has manipulated the Punnett square. They wanted recessive traits. So now they're going to get recessive traits on two and on four. So then I'm going to assign that. They've taken out the dominant trait, at least a double dominant trait. So now one will generate a heterozygous uh, situation right there. These are de novo uh, mutations. When you get them, you roll again. And if you, then you go ahead and assign them as necessary. Had I rolled another one, it would go here and it would do a couple of things. I'm back at my board right here. And so let's say I wanted to draft a die and I wanted to fulfill this GG right here. GG happens to be that three. So I would draft that right in there and I would cover that. Successfully, I have validated one peapod. It would then keep on going around and uh and so forth so let's say i was stuck with this one i did not roll a lowercase t or it was drafted for whatever reason that is what the mutations are for so then i will take a mutation dice and i will take a die from uh, the same color uh, this is a little bit of a waste of a slot however it gets you around when somebody drafts your thing and then i would be able to use that to draft uh, and to validate any particular piece not just uh, the assigned one. So then I would keep on going until I ran out 
of draft slots. As a worker placement action during the first phase, you can open up additional slots, but in the first phase of the game, you're not going to have too many slots. You're going to just try to do the best that you can. Another use of the de novo dice is to get those all precious coins. Oh my goodness, coins in this game. So the first phase is that worker placement. The second phase is actually acquiring and drafting a dice. The third phase is a support phase. This is where you get to that little bit of money that you get, you're going to be able to spend uh, at the market over here, the research upgrades, in order to uh, make your garden more efficient or more powerful, be able to do more things. The market uh, costs are dynamic. So as you buy things, so let's say I wanted to buy a new plot, uh, I would pay two, but then I would move that along so that the next player would have to pay three. Same thing with the action marker. Let's say I wanted to get another action marker. Very, very powerful. You guys know worker placement. Always want more actions, right? Uh, this would cost three, but then the next person would have to pay four, which is a huge sum of money <laughs> in this game. Uh, once the purchases are complete, then the beads would move back one. So, you know, if there's a, a place that wasn't purchased, let's say no one had bought an extra die slot, then it would move back to one. Then the next player in the next round would be able to buy something at a little bit of a discount. So in terms of what you're actually buying, here it is. These are the extra action markers, which is always good. You can buy extra plots where you could put more uh, plants that you are trying to validate. Get uh, more dice slots. So uh, you always draft uh, enough dice to fill your slots. If you have more slots, you could draft more dice. You also have these assistants. Assistants are very, very powerful. Uh, you acquire them and you get always on powers that are available to you for the rest of the game. So as an example, this one for once per turn, you can turn one die into a wild, basically. Uh, this one would give you two extra dice slots if you uh, spend a coin. Uh, so there is a bunch of these assistants and they kind of are the main way that you can really mold your particular strategy for a game of genotype. So let me go ahead and fast forward the game just a second and show you how you actually score these things. So the, uh, this is this space on the board, it's the gardening action. I would use one of my work replacements. Again, this is a future round, uh, a future phase one. And then if I had the validated plant, I would be able to take it, score it, and put it aside. And then whatever other plants I had, I would be able to plant. So that is how you uh, actually make scoring happen. So you're going to use your work replacement to set up the genes. You are going to use that second phase in order to acquire draft dice. And in a future round, if your plants are done, you're going to use the gardening action to score them and then get more plants into your journal. So this is the solo bot. This is the nine card Automa deck, and it always is working on at least two, uh, to start anyway, but it could be up to four different plants that it's going to validate on its own. The bot is fairly snazzy. There is a lot of information on each particular uh, card. They really try to use the space as much as possible. So then you would, uh, in the first phase, after you go, you place your worker, you draw the bot, uh, the card for their worker. So then I would look at the card, it would say something like tool shed, and then something else would happen. Uh, so then here's a tool shed right here. Uh, in any case where it's not all that clear where it would go, you would consult that support card, that second card, and it will tell you what to do. In this particular case, it would, this, uh, this dot over here means that it would discard that card. <laughs> uh, so it does what a bot does, which is take away stuff from you, manipulate the board, get the thing before you can get to them. Uh, so then uh, let's say that it would we just went right there for its first turn. And then after you went, it would pull another card. So there would be an example of treasury. It would just go. Uh, you'd still pull a support card anyway, uh, just to kind of have that happen, but you don't have to consult it because in this particular case, the treasury is pretty easy to go. You would do that for every single one of the worker placement cards. As it gets more actions, you pull more cards and do more actions for the bot. So after you do that for your first phase, uh, you would consult this card, which is kind of a 1.5 phase for the Automa. Uh, it would uh, deal with the trowel that it put on the first phase and give itself a little bit of priority moving forward. It, if it does acquire assistance and it would acquire new cards based on the number of assistance it has, it would get three coins if you're playing in standard mode, which <laughs> good luck with that. <laughs> and then it would just reshuffle this deck so that it gets itself ready for the second full phase. 
So for the second full phase, you are going to also be pulling Automa cards, but they work very, very differently. Now you're just going to be uh, looking at this side of the card and consulting the arrows. So then I would put an arrow next to a card. And as you can see, the arrows line up with the traits. So then what this says is that it would, it would take two, notice double arrow, um, dice away from the GG area and validate itself there if there were dice in the GG area. In this particular case, there is. So then I would validate right there. And then it would also throw away one die from the uh, heterozygous T area in this particular case, I happen to have one too. So it has, uh, it puts a, a thing there too. These are very swingy. They could validate nothing, or they could validate three, three uh, areas in a single die, a single card pull, which is uh, pretty annoying. <laughs> the Automa card also has the arrows that will be functional for the abacus. So in this particular case, it would go with the double arrow and it would do the higher assistant action. So then if it had the money, it would hire an assistant and then it would, it, that assistant would interact with the rest of its cards. Or if I had pulled the, the different areas, the marker, the slot, and the new plot, it would spend money, uh, increase it, uh, the thing on the abacus, like I said before, and then I'll keep on acquiring those things. So as you can see, the Automa card is doing a lot of work, but if you can wrap your head around how the, the different parts of the card interact with different phases, then I think that the Automa deck comes together. All right, so I'm ready to begin to play through. I have my initial coin over here. Let's stick that right there. My resources, my research markers, my um, trowels, which are the quote unquote workers. I got this as a initial tool. I'm gonna to play it immediately. How the flower pot works is I can reach from the nursery and you and uh, start to work on this plant as well as like a, a spare slot. That will be this card. So I think I have a couple of cards that go for the dominant FF. So I am going to go ahead and start working on that and eventually set that as a research goal. I also have this in my hand, another 12 pointer, not happy about 12 pointers, <laughs> but another uh, dominant FF and that'd be uh, set me up for the research goals. I think that's gonna kind of direct the early part of my game. So because I'm going for the dominant Fs, uh, I think the first thing I'm gonna do, in addition to getting a coin from going to, from to Punnett Square, now I have two coins, I'm going to start to set this along and increase the chances that I will get at least a heterozygous uh, I issue a gene, <laughs> uh, but I can also get the dominant gene that I need on a one and a two. Eventually, I might wanna set all of everything to FF, depending on what I get in the future. All right, so now it is the Automa's turn. The Automa is going to pull its first card, which is the first shift action. So the first shift is right there and it consults the support card. The support card says that it is going to go in the blue section. So then it would take its worker piece, place it right there, and then acquire this coin for future use. For my second action, I'm actually going to continue to influence Punnett Squares. It really does help that you get coins from it, uh, this action. So uh, it does a couple of things, helps me craft, and also the very precious money <laughs> economy engine in this game. But I'm going to set it to recessive genes. And it doesn't really matter which one I use. I can use that one, but I'm just choosing to use this one for now which would give me some recessive genes because I have it on my 12 pointer as a recessive requirement. And I also have it as the card in my hand to have the recessive T's. So I'm going to be able to do that. All right, so the second Automa card is the University. Uh, in this case, the support card doesn't matter. The rules are very specific. It is going to say, let me go ahead and put that there. It is going to pay its one coin. So now it's back down to one coin. Here is the Automa section that I have laid out. It's this personal garden. When they acquire new cards, they're gonna go here and here. So this is kind of the bottom of their garden. And the rules say that if you go to the university or anytime it validates, it will validate from the bottom up and it gets one free validation of its most bottom card. For my last action, I'm just gonna to go to the treasury and get two coins. Two coins are just too amazing <laughs> to pass up, but it is also a good thing to deny to the Automa. Last thing the Automa will do is it will go to the nursery. So it is going to put its 
tool there. And I'm going to consult the support card. The support card says it would discard the last card there, but I had acquired this card when I got the flower pot, so it wraps. It's going to acquire this card and put it on the top. You'll see that when I go back to the Automa section, and it is going to discard this card. So any future cards this round that might be acquired would have to come from the top of the deck. This will get refilled at the end of the round, uh, once the new round starts. All right, so now it is time for phase two of round one. I'm actually gonna do this section first. Uh, roll the dice, all the dice are gonna get rolled, but I wanted to illustrate how my manipulation over here kind of affects things. So then, wow, I got a whole bunch of de novo mutations, but let me take care of this first. This FF would always have gone to one. Had I rolled a two, it would not, uh, it would not have gone to this area. It would have instead gone here, thanks to my ministrations. And this four would ordinarily have gone to the totally recessive section, but thanks to my ministrations, once again, it would go to the heterozygous uh, section right here. So I kind of move things along to the dominant area. I re-roll these guys and the F. The three goes there, and I have two de novo mutations, and I'm going to roll for the rest of these genes. All right, so uh, one thing to note about the Automa rule, they do get first shift, which basically eats that coin, but uh, they don't actually pick the blue one first. They go down to the second shift area, where the game flow works is that anybody who goes first shift can pick first, and then anyone in this order can pick a second, and then the turn order kicks in and you'll be able to draft from there. So the Automa is going to get its first pick because it went, it has uh, the second shift before the regular draft. So that was the first step of his 1.5 phase, the Automa at least. It also acquires a new card, which it would put on top. Its garden is now full. So from top to bottom. So if I were to fill in or get a prompt to fill in more cards, instead it would validate from the bottom, so it's just gonna go on this validation kind of progression from there. If it had assistance, it would, at this point, continue to validate. Uh, it does not have any assistance, so it's not gonna validate. Uh, but uh, it is going to take its Automa deck and reshuffle and then begin its second phase. So it happens to uh, be first because of that second shift action. So I'm going to pull an Automa and it is gonna start from the top right there. So then you would just uh, basically cover this and, and follow the arrows. So it would take, uh, well, it would, if it has, if there is a die in the uh, double F phase, the, uh, the heterozygous, uh, what is that? The flower color, it would validate, which it, there is a die there. So it's going to validate and it's going to discard two dice. There are two dice currently in the pool and those are discarded for the time being. It also takes from dominant T, but I shut down dominant T when I um, messed up with the Punnett square, so it's not gonna do anything in that case. And that is the Automus turn, at least for the second shift. All right, back to my board. I got two flowers to fill. Not really in a rush to fill anything in particular, but I do want to take this dominant F that is there there's only one and the Automa might discard it, which is a you know, mean thing that the Automa does. And I'll just throw it right there, uh, just in case I need to finish that six. That's perfectly fine. Back to the Automa's turn. It is going to put uh, the arrows there and it is going to discard two off of the heterozygous T. Thank goodness I don't need any. <laughs> there you go, those are gone. Oh, sorry about that, I fixed that. Uh, and I get to draft now from the RR, which will be the second of validation right on there. All right, so that is, now we're at the uh, next Automa turn, the last Automa turn, it only gets three, and then if it gets upgrades, it'll get more, but at this point, it'll get three. I did validate here because it did hit that goal. And then for this one, it's going to validate the bottom two. It would discard two from GG, which there are uh, two there. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover that. And also from TT, it had already discarded everything, so it does not validate there. All right, and so now this is the last thing. I'm gonna start to work on this one. I have the Punnett square manipulated to give me recessive traits. I do not have 
uh, the one for this recessive trait down here. So I happen to roll pretty good and I'm going to draft this four, which would allow me to put a die right there. All right, now we go to the research phase and the automa goes first. Second player always goes first. So the automa in the solo is, sec is the second player. So they always go first in this phase, turn over a card. And then of course, <laughs> It would, you would follow the double arrow right there and it would spend its gold or its coins that it got during the autumn phase on a new action marker. So now making that more expensive, I do not like that. I was gonna probably go for that, but that's what the autumn does, <laughs> is get in your way. So now it is done. It cannot afford anything else. Normally it would get two buys, but it spent all of its coins. There's only one left. So now I have five coins and I can look and see what I want from there. All right, so coins exist to be spent. I'm going to spend four coins, one on a research assistant. So the research assistant I'm going to choose is this one. Uh, this is uh, once per turn, I can draft a die and I can use it anywhere. I don't, I don't, I'm not held to the normal uh, placement rules, at least once per turn. I th I'm looking at working on some bigger scoring uh, thing, so I'm not too concerned about having a whole lot of plots, but I need be, to be able to, you know, fill those things with as much, much efficiency as possible. And to that end, I'm going to spend my last two on a dice slot, so now I can d draw four dice in a turn to get these bigger plants uh, filled out. And that's the round. On to round two. All right, so as you can see, fresh board for a new round, discarded. Uh, well, I replaced all these. Discarded whatever's in the tool row and, re and replaced all those too. What I had forgotten to do last turn was when I bought the die slot, it would increase by one. When I bought the assistant, it would increase by one, but then it falls back one, and that's why this new plot is so cheap. It's now worth uh, one coin, and nothing goes below one coin. New coins over here, everything has been cleared, and we are ready to begin. All right, so for my first action, I'm going to go to my own space, which is the gardening space. First thing I do is I'm gonna pick a, a flower from the garden. Like I said, I think I'm arcing my game towards big scoring. <laughs> so I'm gonna take that one right there. I am going to uh, take, well, I take that into my hand, first of all. And then I, val and then I just um, score this. So that goes on my uh, score pile off to the side. I have six points in the bag. And then I can plant whatever I want, whatever I have free slots for, and that's going to be this 12 and this 11. So yes, I know, I have a lot of work to do, but I'm going to work on <laughs> having the ability to actually do all this and then score big. I could score a whole bunch of flowers, but I think for this game, why not? Just go for go big or go home. So the Automa's first action is going to be to go to the tool shed, and it is going to discard a card and validate one of the plants, just because it's a jerk. For the support card, I pick the... Car, uh, the, the dot down here. So that means this seed bag, goodbye seed bag, is gonna go away and it is going to validate this plant right there. Uh, once it com completes a um, completely validates a plant, it just automatically gets discarded and then everything kind of moves down. For my second action, precious, precious coins. That's partly just because I want coins and also because I do not want the Automa to get coins. Feel like just ugh, wish money wasn't so tight in this game. For the autumn second action, it's going to manipulate one of the Punnett squares, pull a support card, and it's going to turn this bottom slot, the bottom slot right here, into dominant uh, uppercase R. I don't know that that hurts me, so that's not uh, the worst thing in the world. It is going to put its marker right there, and it's going to take a coin. That does certainly hurt me. For my last action, I'm going to put that right there and I'm just going to close off recessive genes all together <laughs> and get the coin. Now remember the Autumn has two actions left because it had acquired another uh, piece. So the next piece is going to be the nursery and is going to discard the middle card or acquire the middle card and discard the next card over. Remember though, it has a full garden at this point. So what it does when it has a full garden is just discard both of them and validate a trait. Well, it'll discard one of them to validate the trait. So then instead of validating that, this is now full and it is into its personal score pile. There you go, Automa. And 
everything moves down. So as you can see, it has a pretty organic way of moving through its stuff. The last thing that the Automa does is gardening. So if for, for the Automa, it would validate a trade for each assistant it has. Has not acquired any assistance, so it's just going to acquire the top card. Oh my god, big scoring. <laughs> it's doing the same thing I'm doing. But uh, so that's it. That is the uh, rest of its turn. All right, so those are my rolls for the uh, gene phase. Look at that. <laughs> it's exactly what I wanted, and everything else is a nice, uh, nice uh, distribution. All right, so I get the draft first. I'm going to try to knock off this guy right here. So I am going to put that in the die slot that I purchased and get a recessive T going right there. So we're back to the Automa. It's it's doing its 1.5 turn right now. I'm, I skipped ahead a little bit, uh, but <laughs> I'll just catch up right now. So it acquires the three coins, giving it five, which I hate. <laughs> Uh, and then it is going to validate relative to the number of research assistants it has. It has no research assistance, so it doesn't do that. And it's going to reshuffle its Automa deck, which I already had already done. So then it, it's going to do this three times. And it's going to go there. Uh, it is going to look at double R, which there is, and discard one of those. And then look at double T, which uh, there is one of them, and validate both. In addition, this did not happen last time. If there was a de novo mutation in green, it would acquire that one as well. But there is, lucky for me, there is no de novo mutation in D. Otherwise, it would have validated three <laughs> space in a turn. Don't want that. Two is bad enough. For my next dice draft, I'm going to get this blue dice, which will allow me to validate here the heterozygous RR. Okay, this is the second Automa action right there it is going to discard two off of GG which there's only one but uh, that's enough it's going to go there and then it is going to validate off of dominant TT of which there is none so it only validates one that time all right so for this next trick I'm actually going to use her tap her I uh, would normally not be able to do this recessive one but because of sister Maria I can acquire this one and use it for any to validate any one I want, and that is going to validate that guy. This is the last chance for the Automa to do its own thing, and it completely and utterly whiffs. Although it does, if there was a de novo die in yellow, it would acquire it, but there is no de novo die in yellow. Yeah. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I am going to acquire a blue, and go ahead and start validating this one. I have a plan, hopefully, for these FFs as they come along. Armed with five coins, the Automa is going to go over here and it is going to do the thing that I was afraid of, which is hire assistant. <laughs> uh, with its, uh, which it cost it two coins, it is going to hire the last assistant in the row. No, I like her. She needs to be mine. No, <laughs> it is going to pay the two coins to go ahead and acquire that. Uh, so that is its turn, and then I get to purchase and went with my three. I think this is kind of a no-brainer. I'm not really sure of the strategy of the game, but I think it's a no-brainer. I'm going to acquire the shovel for a fourth action. So higher sits is more expensive, the action marker is more expensive. It goes again with its second buy, so you pull another support card, see what it uh, goes for. The double arrow is pointing it to a dice slot, so it is going to acquire a dice slot for two coins, and then everything else is going to reset. That's the end of round two. So now we are in round three of five. We both have four action markers and we're ready to rock. All right, so we got a piece for the tool shed and this pollen brush is going to play very much into my uh, plans. This means that if I validate one, then I can validate every single copy of the plant. So uh, what I have laid out here is that as you can see, I have FF, FF, FF. If I grab an FF, which I have right now I'm guaranteed to, this would validate all of them at once. So very cool, very key. 
All right, so the card here says for the Automa that it is going to manipulate the Punnett square. Because there is no color here, you would refer to the original card, so it would manipulate the Punnett square of yellow. And in this case, there's already something there, but it takes it out right there. I'll go ahead and put a shovel there and it take a card of a coin on behalf of the Automa. That's cool. I already got what I needed. That's great. For my second action, just gonna go back to the treasury. I feel like I bought that that fourth action just to devote to treasury duty the entire time. All right, so for the next trick, uh, the Automa actually would go to the treasury, but I am blocking it, so it cannot go. Uh, there are two spaces in the treasury, but that's for four plus players. It would keep the support card, you would just redraw and follow the next thing, which is a gardening action. So gardening, pretty simple. Uh, it has, it now has an assistant, and which is basically blank uh, for the purposes of here, but it does get a validation token and it would get another, um, it would draw another P, another flower card, but because it's full, it would validate again. So it is working on its, you know, putting together its flower empire. So I like where I'm at in terms of the Punnett squares. I think that it, um, my board is set up to give me what I need, uh, even if I just, you know, play it straight. So I'm just gonna go here and I am going to take the coin and I'm gonna be able to make sure that I draft this first. For the bot's third action, it is going to go to the university. I don't need to consult the support card. Gotta draw it, but I don't need to support it. Helps me. I think it's actually the worst action it could take on the board because it actually spends a coin doing so. But uh, actually, let me go ahead and put a shovel there. But it does validate a card. So this nine is now scored. It is ahead of me two cards to one, but I think I'm okay with that. And then all the other cards in his tableau move around. And we are going to you know, get that going there. And then for the last turn, I am going to put a marker on my temporary dice slot. All right, so for this last Automa action, I actually had to draw a couple because the board's a little crowded at this point. <laughs> That's how it's gonna be for the rest of the time. So the first card that I drew is the first shift, and then it will go first shift in yellow. A little bit of a break for me because I had already claimed the coin. It only has one coin going into the second phase, which I think I'm pretty feeling pretty good about. All right, those are my rolls. Uh, as usual, up in blue and red, I have that locked down for dominant traits. Uh, this one, although this one ended up with a lot of de novo, a lot of de novo in this roll, uh, at least below blue. All right, let's get busy. I got a lot of work to do over here, so we're going to draft that die. Actually, I'm going to put that one in the temporary, work from left to right, and then uh, that is a G, uh, capital G, double G, double K, lowercase G, which is heterozygous. And let's go ahead and put a validation token on there. Okay. Um, I really should be better about this. This is the Automa's 1.5 phase. It gets three more coins uh, to play with in the market phase. It does validate one more uh, per assistant. So this is the assistant. It will validate and it is going to score this five. So now it has three cards validated. I do not love that in the slightest. It will draw another card. So that goes uh, nominally on top. It would draw more, but it doesn't have any uh, pod upgrades. When I do pull, it's gonna pull four times from the Automa deck, thanks to three times for its base and then one dice slot that it upgraded. Uh, so that is the 1.5 turn. So now it is going to go and it is going to work from the top down. It is going to acquire a G gene, which, ugh. <laughs> Uh, I am not liking that. So it is going to uh, validate once and discard the one piece of G material, which is I did need that. I have to figure out what I'm going to do around that. We'll see. All right, so I have four selections. I'm going to pick this one for the T. Uh, that is a heterozygous T, so I'm going to validate right there. Second Automa, it is going to, this is already validated, so that's okay, and it is going to look at the top G, which it has, and which is going to get discarded. So, yeah, uh, all of my Gs are going to get discarded, and there is no uh, de novo dice, so I just have to keep in mind that too. 
All right, so now I'm going to do the trick with the pollen brush. So I am going to put that, that is the double F, and I'm going to use my pollen brush uh, to validate every copy of that thing. Thank you very much, pollen brush. Going to get three. One, two, three. Got them all done in a line. I'm very happy about that. Here we go with the Automa once again. It hits the R. Is there material in the R? Yes, there is. And it does not do anything for that. So it is going to validate the R. I feel like I'm not doing that well. <laughs> I feel like it's really doing a lot. All right, so the last two pieces I need, a regressive RR and the GG have been, are gone. They're not here. Uh, one GG was taken and the RR, I think I had a chance at it at the beginning of the turn or at an earlier turn, uh, but them's the breaks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap my lady over here, uh, Sister Maria, and I am gonna grab me that die. Normally that's just the a lower, uh, an RR, uh, the, the heterozygous R, but I can, in this particular case, finish off that card. Due to the upgrade, it's going to discard these three cards and then pull another one that will operate over here. It is going to acquire the FF, which does not exist. It would acquire a Nova Dice from Blue, but that does not exist either. Got a little bit of a break. So how cool would it have been <laughs> had I had access to that? I do not have access to that or a resource that would help me unfortunately so what i'm going to do is i'm going to draft the de novo dice if i had a sixth open slot i would be able to grab this and another one to be able to place that but i don't so i can only grab it and grab one coin that's okay i have resources to be able to take care of that one during the next round all right so third phase it has uh the second place so it's going first and it's going to show me where the double arrow goes it is going to hire another assistant for two coins, has the two coins, and I am going to pull a support card to see which assistant it hires. It hires the first one in the row. So it doesn't really matter for its purposes. Uh, so this is Brother uh, uh, Alipius. There you go, Alipius. And if they're in a the gardening phase, I'd be able to pull out another card if I had him, but you know, it doesn't really do anything right now. Or at least it would just, uh, it would basically, it, it steps up the validation page for him. The, the actual power doesn't matter. All right, for me, I am going to spend two coins to get an extra dice slot. Uh, I, if I had that extra dice slot last time, I would have been able to finish these cards, but I don't. <laughs> All right, so it is the Automa's second buy. It, is go it would buy a new action marker. It is not going to buy a new action marker. So I would basically cycle through until I could find something I could afford. It only has two coins, so it affords a new plot. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and give it a new plot right there, spending one. Now it has a new plot. Boo, I don't like that. I am also going to spend my last two coins, and I'm going to buy a new plot as well. On to round four. All right, we begin round four. So I was really hoping this would happen. There is an ob object here called the watering funnel. I'm going to put that my tool there as my first action. I'm going to acquire it, and that will let me validate the very last gene that I have in my pool, which I really needed. So good thing that came out. Did not like having to waste an action to get the tool for it, but that's what the game is for. It gives you those resources in case you miss it the first time. It gives you enough um, to be able to do it on subsequent turns. So here's the Automa. There is its first turn. Going to reveal the university. Still have to reveal a support card, even though it doesn't uh, work, work like that. It has one coin, so it's able to use the university, so now it has zero. It's going to validate this plant and score it. <laughs> it now has four validated plants. Boo! And it is on its way to validating a really big one. Uh, but at least it's emptied out a little bit. It'll fill up again, but, you know, uh, it is it's doing its thing. All right, for my second action... I'm kind of following a script at this point. I, you know, I was looking at this and knew I was going to do this, and I'm happy that a couple of cards are advantageous that are on the tableau here. So I am going to take the from the nursery these two cards and put them in. Uh, they happen to be that 
uh, dominant purple flower, the, the top uppercase FF. So I do like having that around. My biggest fear, no! It went to the treasury. It's taking a precious coin, no! All right, so now I get to do all sorts of amazingness here, cool. So I am going to go to the gardening and do the gardening action. You knew I was setting up for that, right? First step is I can pull from the nursery or the tool shed. I'm gonna to pull from the tool shed, which is the seed bag. I'm gonna use it right now. Draw five, keep two. All right, so I drew my five. I'm gonna keep these two. Uh, did not pull any of those dominant Fs that I want, but that's okay. I can manipulate the board to accommodate for that. And I get to harvest all the ones that are done. That's the key. Oh, baby. Wow, I felt behind. I knew I was building up for that. I hope that's enough. <laughs> I hope I have done enough to, you know, kind of rely on that and uh, keep going. So I destroy, I get rid of this initial flower pot. Thank you, flower pot. All of those are going to get played into my score pile. And because I bought this last turn, I can plant three additional flowers. That is going to be that one over there. Uh, let's get a low scoring flower going. I'm pretty okay with that. And let's see, probably this one. I can keep going with the dominant Fs that way. Let's pull me out of a deck over here. It is the tool shed, which is taken. So it's going to just, that's the support card. So we have to keep drawing. It is the first shift action. So the first shift action, because the support card has nothing, you consult the original thing, it would go to green. Go over here and take its coin. Ooh. Then for my last action, I'm going to manipulate the Punnett square over here, take this off. So now I have access to the lower Fs, a little bit more access, and that gets me a coin. All right, last action of the round. He loves his green. So he is going to put the flag right there and i know that so he's gone to manipulate the punnett square i know that because that's what the support card says it is uppercase g so he put uppercase g right there just really wants to lock that lock that down <laughs> all right so now it's going to do its 1.5 turn which i don't like at all uh it's going to pull two cards because it has it gets one free card pull and it also gets another card pull for this Thing. and it also has two assistants so it's going to validate two things it's going to validate that one and that one and then score this 12 I mean the scoring is pretty inevitable <laughs> uh, in terms of you know having gotten its upgrades and doing its thing uh, and I also have to give it three coins so it now has six coins to buy upgrades the only saving grace is that that is the next to last round so it's not going to get that much benefit from whatever it gets but I don't like that it has six coins and I have one <laughs> <laughs> all right so now we could be in phase two proper laying that out nothing <laughs> no recessive traits available at all which is so so sad all right so now we have laid out the board uh for the fourth round look at the lack of recessive traits <laughs> because of what went on over here one lonely recessive trait and i'm hoping that it, it will go uh, first in this uh, second phase, so it is, it's gonna go and then I'll go. I'm really hoping it doesn't take that, okay? It actually can't take that because it would have to key off of these cards, so I think that recessive trait is perfectly safe for me. But it does knock out an RR, uh, so it does ha I do have one of those, so that's gonna get discarded, uh, and it's gonna validate one trait. I have no snazzy tools, I only have uh, Sister Maria over here who can take one uh, die as wild. I am going to need to do that uh, but I think I'm have enough time and I'm gonna try to protect my uh, looking actually looking at the board it doesn't look like that I'm, I'm you know I'm think I'm going pretty good. All right so I'm going to begin and I'm gonna try to complete these two flowers at least. So I'm gonna put uh, the two over there and then cover that up. Cause I got that from the heterozygous section. 
automa is second, and it is going to discard from the recessive, which is there's nothing there. It's also going to validate this T, which there is something there. At this point, I am I think I'm just drafting off of what I need to fill these two, and I am going to take that. That is the blue, which is dominant R, right up there. All right, so we are going to put another one down, and I seem to have averted disaster for the time being. Cool. All right, going to take one for the dominant gene, the dominant flower gene, put that one right there. I'll discard these three, and do a fourth one for this guy, and it is going to discard two off of those T's. Good thing I don't need them. And also, it would acquire uh, the de novo dice, but there is no de novo dice on green. So now I get to finish off my turn in relative peace and tranquility. <laughs> going to pick that one, which allows me to get that going. That's off of the pod, a height, the plant height section. And then for G, I'm going to use my lady once again. Go ahead and refocus that. There you go. The lady, once again, she is a person that I can take kind of a while every once uh, as I can. This GG is heterozygous, but I can turn it into whatever I want and qualify it for whatever I want, which means I've successfully completed two more plants. Great. So good thing it only has two more buy, two more actions because it has the rule of the roost. I only have one coin. I do not want a new plot. Uh, so I'm not, I'm going to skip the buy phase, but it is going to buy. Uh, dice slot. So there you go. Uh, for two and a new plot. For one, that costs it three. We skipped the buy phase in the last turn, so money is not going to be as important. But just for you know simplicity's sake, I'm going to you know adjust all the values, and then this would all go down at the beginning uh, or just at the end of the turn. So that is the last round. Let's go. All right, final round. So I'm only going to go through phase one and phase two. No need to buy anything for phase three. The way it works is that uh, I will score, obviously, for the points over here. Score one point for uncompleted buds over there. So will the bot. And I'll also score points for money. Not going to have too much <laughs> money left. And I'm going to try to arc my game so that I don't have any. Um, you know, I'm going to try to fill in these two. So that'd be, um, can a, a couple things need to come together. The, the bot needs to knock it in my way for it. See what happens. Okay, first things first, I'm gonna garden. Uh, I'm gonna take these out. Well, first of all, uh, the, actually, the first thing that actually happens is I get a, a card. That card's actually not gonna come from the top row because I have what I need to fill in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a tool. I'm gonna get the dissertation. I'm gonna use it in just a second. Then I'm gonna score these. So then, that's going to go away, and I get two more for the score pile. And then I'm going to plant. This one, it's a, a spare plot I could have kept. I just want to consolidate for the camera. And then this one is for my hand. So that is the complete gardening action. And then I'm going to use the dissertation immediately. It is a research that I can a research spot that I can purchase for one coin instead of the usual two. Very good action economy. And I have been working on the Fs the entire time. So that is a very large score. If, um, well, it's a, a very large score now, and then I have a couple of plants that will even add to that if I can make that work. All right, so the, for the bot's first turn, it is going to pull the university. Has pulled the university pretty often. It is a little annoying, especially in this last round, because it doesn't really care about money, so it's just gonna spend the money gleefully. <laughs> Go ahead and put that there. And then it is going to complete this nine pointer. Oh, well, so there you go. Nothing, there's nothing I can really do to stop the progress of the bot. It's not like I can take uh, material away from it. It's just kind of like at the mercy <laughs> of stuff. So that's the Ottoman's turn. All right, so the thing that I was hoping to avoid, I avoid it. So I'm gonna go here I'm gonna get this craft knife. Craft knife allows me to draft a die and then, or when I draft it, I can draft another die simultaneously. So um, I could just put it on temporary die slot, but this is a little bit more um, efficient because this will automatically get a die, a little bit ahead of where the, the bot's going, and I'll be able to claim that. 
I need that because as you can see, I have six slot I have six things to fill. I have five slots and now I have a six slot with the craft knife. Hopefully I can get all six and complete these two and score them before the end of the game. It is a good thing that I did the tool shed at that point because that was the next card is tool shed. Doesn't do that. So it is going to go to the subsequent card, which is the uh, first shift for green. This was the support card that I pulled, but it does not have a color. So I'm just going to do first shift in green. So then that allows me to go over here. It gets the coin. That's a point. It will have some priority there. For my third action, I am going to go to the first shift over here. I really need this to work out. <laughs> so um, there you go. Uh, so now I have one my one coin back and I need two of these, hoping to land two of them. I don't think I can do too much to increase the chances of it landing in this particular spot. So I'm hoping to that this is clear and I'm able to claim what's here. I mean, the craft knife is going to help me out there. For the bot's third action, it is going to go to the nursery. So it's going to grab a card. Which grab? Which card is it going to grab? It's going to grab the first card and then discard the second. So as you saw, it um, when it's full, it will validate instead of take cards. But it is not even close to full right now. It's three out of four slots. So there you go. And I don't need anything from the nursery. So that's perfectly fine. And then for my last action, I'm not going to mess around. I need I need these dice. So I'm going to go first shift. I'm going to go ahead and get that coin. And I'm going to draft uh, the flower color that I need. The last turn for the bot is the treasury. Two coins for you. You are now up to five coins, bot. I don't like it. But the bot never got a research action going. So there's... Uh, points uh, opportunity for points that it, it got denied just I just happened to play a game where it never hit the University is one in nine chance of happening So it's not that unusual that I didn't hit it But I did get lucky that it didn't get at least one research thing. I did get one along the way However, it didn't when I did get the research thing I couldn't afford it It needs to be able to afford something in order to do the action So that's why uh, it never got the research thing that I got all right, so I have rolled, and as you can see, I got zero <laughs> De Novo dice, not one. I can't believe it. Uh, that might really help me because it's not going to give the bot an opportunity to do extra things. Uh, and I just need to hope and pray that I can get all six dice that I want. But first, I need to do the bot's 1.5 turn. It has two extra, or one extra plot, so it's going to pull one card from the top of the deck, and it is also going to uh, pull one. And discard it but that actually just ends up in a validation it has two research assistants so it is going to validate twice more <laughs> man i don't like that <laughs> it's going to just get this 12 right away uh that's just that's from um having research assistants and it is going to pull four from the automa deck and it is also going to get three coins which is three points is now up to seven points off of coins <laughs> I really hope that everything comes together and I'll be able to beat this bot. All right, so I actually have three pulls that I can do before the bot does anything. One from red, one from yellow, and one with my craft knife, as long as I pick the, that same color. And I specifically chose to go to red and yellow because that's where I need stuff. So I am going to put that right there, which validates this guy right there. And then I'm going to use the craft knife to pick another one from heterozygous T and cover that space. So actually, let me go ahead and make that clear that I'm using that right there. And then also I drafted from red and red was very successful for me. Red was very nice. I has four in the heterozygous and just one uh, in the double uh, capital letter. So I'm just going to get that double capital letter right now and do that. I am feeling really good about where things are going for me. All right, so this is a shuffled automa deck. It's gonna go four times, and it is going to get the lowercase f too bad. <laughs> it doesn't do anything. No, the Nova's nice to take. Man, good, I love when the automa has an empty turn like that. Okay, I'm going to draft the last die that was a real question, which is the heterozygous R. I only had one of those, but it had no chance of getting it, so I wasn't too worried about it. And I'm going to draft 
right there. For its section action, it's going to go down the uh, lane. One, the discard of the 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 capital letter F. I'm sure there's a scientific name for that, but that's not escaping me right now. Again, once again, no uh, the Nova die, so it's just going to discard one off of F off of. Actually, wait a minute. I'm reading that wrong. There is no FF. I took it. Yes! <laughs> Another empty turn for the bot. Suck it, bot. <laughs> Just so you know I'm not cheating. That's what the FF looked like. It is nice and empty. All right. I have two more dice to draft. and I think I'm pretty much in the clear. So I'm going to go ahead and draft that one and put that on here. And in this mode and the last round, these actually validate automatically. I probably should have said that. You don't need an extra action if you're doing this in the last round. Bang. All right. It is going to try to go, and will it whiff again? No, it actually won't whiff again. It will It will score this. Ignore the no, de novo dice, but it will discard one off of G and then score itself. I think that is the last of the scoring for the bot. But not for me, I need a heterozygous uh, FF. I happen to have one right there. I'm gonna validate this last one and I have scored my very last dice. And that was anticlimactic in terms of its rolling out, but actually the, the drama was in that first phase, making sure I had all the resources, get the craft knife, you know, have the extra slots in order to do it, and I did it, yes. So then these go away, and I pull the last one. There are no available dice, so it doesn't really count. It doesn't really matter, but I'm just doing it <laughs> just to articulate and follow through. So that is the end of the game. Let us uh, get to scoring. All right, so that is the final layout. Here is the automa. Here is my score. We ended up completing the same exact number of flowers, which I guess is a good sign. <laughs> Uh, this had obviously more coins. Uh, I had a couple of coins that I ended up with. The big difference for me though was this thing never got research markers. I did and every single one of my cards hit. I ended up with over 90, 92 and the bot has 82. So I win. Yes. <laughs> I really hope you enjoyed that game of Genotype. It is a really cool game. Uh, the Automa is a little bit heady, but uh, at the end of the day, if you can get into it, it's pretty slick and it kind of simulates an opponent uh, maybe more than uh, just a deck of cards would. So if that's your flavor, then you know go for it. I'd highly recommend this product. It is going to stay in my collection. So uh, this is Jason reminding you, go ahead and check us out at the One Stop Co-op Shop, YouTube, Discord, Patreon, all the stuff I said at the beginning of the show. So until next time, See you at the next stop.